and welcome back to my channel. If you didn't already, as I announced yesterday, I am three months pregnant, uh, or 13 weeks and two days. I wanted to make a video talking about my first trimester and how I felt like physically and emotionally and just everything that's kind of going on so far, because I hope it's interesting to you and it's something that I want to talk about because this channel is a way for me to talk about my mental health, my physical problems, uh, my mental health problems, my life and I am pregnant now so this is a part of my life so I will be including pregnancy updates and talking about the baby on this channel but I will make those videos separate to my um, <clears throat> to my usual videos just so that there is kind of some clarity and uh, a bit of definition between them because I know that not, not everyone will be interested in kind of hearing about like the baby stuff and the pregnancy stuff but hopefully if you are interested in it then you can watch both um, and if you're not then you don't have to watch these videos. Yesterday I had my 12 week scan and I actually found out that I was 30 weeks pregnant instead of 12 weeks um, so I'm about a week earlier, I'm about a week ahead than I thought I was. I'm going to show you the scan pictures now. So this, that's the baby, can you see? There's the head, there's the body and the legs and that's even better that you can see proper look. Oh! So yeah, that is our baby. Um, we do actually have another photo where the baby turned front on and we can see its face, but we've given that to Lola for now. So she's got a photo because uh, we are getting uh, copies of them all so everyone can have a copy. Um, but for now we wanted her to have one and she really liked that one because the baby looks like a demon and a monster. So uh, if you didn't already, then Lola is Sam's daughter. She is nine years old. We told her yesterday. And do you have any brothers or sisters? I have a brother. You have a brother? Yeah. And would you like a, another brother or sister? Yeah. Another little baby brother or sister? What? <laughs> what? You're going to have a little baby brother or sister. <laughs> Shiga! Because we wanted to wait until the 12 week scan to make sure that everything was okay and everything is okay um, as far as as far as we know at this scan they do like uh, measurements and a blood test to test for certain genetic conditions if i am high risk i will hear within three working days and if i'm low risk or no risk then i'll hear like in seven to ten days by letter um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, everything will be okay. I'll just talk about, because I mentioned it just now, I'll just talk about that. I have been having a lot of problems with my heart. You can get palpitations uh, with pregnancy, but I already have a heart condition and heart problems. And the pregnancy has made it worse so far. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm being looked after by the consultant, because of my heart problem. Yeah, it's um, been really bothering me. I had a really bad day yesterday with it. I think it might also be a blood pressure thing, um, because when I'm lying down, my blood pressure is going all funny and I'm feeling really... You know you get like a blood pressure headache and I felt I've been feeling like that. I have, uh, I can't remember what it's called, I have two problems with my heart. One of them's mitral valve regurgitation, where the blood flows the wrong, like flows back out through like one of the valves or pumps. Yeah, my heart's been bothering me a lot. We've told almost everybody now, I'm going to tell my nieces and my brother and sister-in-law uh, this afternoon, which I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be a lot of fun um, and I'm really excited about that and then everyone will know so I'll be able to announce it to the world um, but for now uh, my mum and dad my sister know Sam's family know and Lola told all of her family yesterday which was really sweet I'm very much looking forward to be able to be open about it because I've been so desperate to tell people for like since the beginning but obviously you know most people wait for the 12 week scan because of um, the risk after 12 weeks the risk of miscarriage drops significantly that's actually something that I should talk about um, Something I've not talked about at all to anybody in kind of uh, in any of my social media accounts is the fact that last year I had a miscarriage. It's something that has made me very aware with this pregnancy about, I mean, I didn't know I was pregnant at the time last year and it was very, very early. It's something that you think about and it's something that really affected me. It didn't affect me at the time mentally, but now with this pregnancy and I think this year I've started thinking about it more and feeling guilt and just kind of loss for something that didn't happen, if that makes sense. It's meant that this pregnancy, I've been very, very, very anxious, which I'll probably talk about a bit more in a minute. I've been pretty nervous, um, every little twinge or feeling, I am start freaking out, which I'm sure is really annoying, but I can't help it. Physically, I've been feeling pretty rough. I've had really bad morning sickness and just general exhaustion and everything you can imagine. I've been feeling really dizzy, headaches, 
really, really tired. Like if I don't have an afternoon nap, then I just feel really, really poorly. I mean, pretty much I have to like have a morning nap and an afternoon nap and then I'm going to bed at like seven. I've been sleeping a lot, except in the night time because in the night time I have like insomnia, which is not fun. It's probably because I'm sleeping so much in the day, but it's also because of um, at night time I feel really poorly, have really bad heartburn and really bad sickness as well. So I have these, which are C bands, which help with nausea. I didn't, you don't like notice the sickness like going away, but you kind of, you notice it takes the edge off it and then when you take them off, you feel it coming back, so they do work. Uh, so if you have um, if you have morning sickness or you have anything like travel sickness or just general ugh, hiccups, general nausea, I'd really recommend these. My sister got them for me. Other physical things, uh, my skin broke out again. Uh, you can see I have like a few spots there, but it's not anything major. I always get like spots around like my hairline. Um, but I think it's partly because I've had to stop using the sunbeds because I was using like a sunbed once a week to clear my skin up and to get vitamin D because I have a severe vitamin D deficiency. But now I'm on tablets anyway for the vitamin D because uh, the pregnancy tablets have vitamin D in them. Or mine do anyway. It doesn't hurt the baby having going on a sunbed, but it's for your skin because your skin can be very sensitive when you're pregnant. So it's kind of to make sure that you don't uh, burn and stuff. Um, and also the other thing is... The skincare stuff that I use all has salicylic acid in it, which is sort of clearing up spots. And it's something that I don't recommend using when you're pregnant. Um, I've had to stop using all of my body care stuff, all of my, my skincare stuff. And I've had to switch it up. I don't have no pregnancy glow. I look like shit. Um, I've been feeling really rough. Actually, today is the first day that I've got the tiniest bit of energy. Um, and I'm probably going to be expending it all with this video. Mentally, there's kind of like the three three prongs. There's like there's the eating disorder side of things, there's the depression side of things, and then there's like the anxiety side. Um, I've just mentioned now about the anxiety. Like I have had really really bad anxiety. Also, I had to come off of my anti-anxiety medication, or both of them. So I've had to come off all of my medication, which I'll talk about in a minute. It was making a massive difference. I was on sertraline and um, various benzos, uh, which I've been on for about ten years. Um, but the search room was just starting to help and I had to stop it <laughs> but it's worth it it's just I have been very anxious about the baby and I'm hoping that now that I've had the 12 week scan and when I start to show then I will feel like a little bit less anxious and worried about everything and the further along I get then I've got like labour to worry about actually I have been thinking about labour um, and kind of thinking about what I want in terms of plans until I've seen the consultant because I'm under specialist care I've been referred to um, a consultant at the John Radcliffe Hospital because they have the best team in the UK for what I need. Basically I'm considered a high risk case because of all my medical problems so that means that I get extra special care which I'm not going to complain about because when you're pregnant you want to be looked after and you want to know that everything's okay and that you're under the best people and I will be. Uh, the only downside is that if I give birth in a uh, John Radcliffe. There's only one birthing pool and I really, really, really want a water birth and in Northampton, which is like 10 minutes away from my house and the John Radcliffe is about 40 miles, so it's a bit further. Northampton, there is several birthing pools, um, so I'd have more chance of, of being able to use one. But I'll just have to see how it goes. It's, you know, the most important thing is that I'm under the best people and the people in Oxford are, so uh, if it means I have to have a dry birth, oh god, that sounds horrible. Um, but yeah, I am going to be looking at the hypnobirthing route or I've already started looking at it. I want to try and be as calm and relaxed as possible for both me and the baby. I have major fears because I have a few phobias um, that may come up in labour. So, um, I have a problem with things being in me like tubes and cannulas and needles. That I can deal with like an injection, but in terms of like stuff staying in me, that's why I could not have an epidural. So. Um, if I have a caesarean, it's going to need some discussion because um, I can't have an epidural. Not so much because of the epidural, but because you have a catheter in afterwards uh, for like 24 hours. And I need to be in the best form possible to look after my baby. I don't want to be an anxious, phobic mess. Um, but that's all stuff that can be talked about and will be talked about with the Silver Star unit here, the, the high risk baby people. So I've talked about the anxiety side of things, depression. I've had some quite low spells, I've got to be honest. I don't know whether it's because of hormones uh, coming off my antidepressants or just general. It's a big life change and I think most people struggle with their hormones. They do struggle with their hormones and will have kind of shifts in mood. For me, I felt very isolated and alone because nobody really knows how you feel. Like, I don't have any pregnant people in my life. Um, but 
even so every pregnancy is different so everyone feels different and with feeling so poorly if you have a cold then people can relate to a cold everyone knows kind of what it feels like you know even if it's like like a worse one or whatever people know what that feels like but when you're pregnant every as i said everyone's different um and not everyone knows what it feels like <clears throat> or no one knows how you feel and that can be very isolating and yeah i have felt very alone in that and i'm just going to say talk about how the eating is going eating side of things as i said earlier when i had the miscarriage last year i had to come off of my medication i was on migraine medication and it can cause uh, it can give you a high risk of miscarriage and birth defects and because i had a miscarriage and it was something that was kind of worrying me and also it wasn't working um, and i was on like higher than the highest dose and the doctors weren't happy because it still wasn't working as it should it had worked at the beginning but it wasn't working anymore and the side effects were pretty horrific so i came off of that and a side effect of coming off of that is gaining weight and also because of the miscarriage my hormones went completely all over the place and i, I gained weight even though i wasn't eating a mass amount of, especially because that happened in last may and um, then in last september my anxiety and my depression got a lot worse and I completely lost my appetite so I was like eating fuck all but like my weight wasn't shifting and it was because of all the changes that have been happening in my body because it can take a few years of coming off of the medication that I was on for your body to regulate again because it really affects your hormones and it's weird because I didn't realize at the time how much it affected my hormones it even gave me a false period for a few years before they started again I mean I don't know when the real one started and when the false one was there becoming pregnant I feel very similar to how I felt every time my dose went up on that medicine so that like, my skin would break out that I'd feel very sick I'd have like massive aversions to food and just lots of other things exhaustion it just goes to show that being on uh, it was to pyramate or topamax as it's known I think it's known like as topamax in the US um, it really does affect your body in a massive way um, it's an epilepsy medication uh, that's used for migraine prevention. prevention. Eating, yes, I know I keep getting off track with this. I think the biggest problem I'm finding with eating at the moment is just because of feeling so poorly all the time. Like, I have no problem in being able to nourish the baby. If it was just for me, I wouldn't be able to do it, but it's for the baby and I feel able to do that. But because I feel so poorly at the moment, like, I can, there's only a few foods that I feel I can stomach. Um, I'm hoping that being in the second trimester now, that's going to start to ease. But I've gone completely off like all the foods that I love and all the foods that kind of make me feel okay and I feel good about. The only thing that I've been craving is fruit a lot. Like, I, I have to have fruit in the house or I start to feel panicky because in the middle of the night I'm waking up with like really really bad sickness and the only thing that calms it down is like some fruit. Oh I was going to talk about medication um, and realising how reliant I am on medication like since I've had to come off of all of mine, you know, I was on benzos, painkillers, several types of painkillers for different things, my antidepressants, I realised how reliant I was on them, and I need them, it's not like unnecessary, um, it's something that I need, but like, when I have a headache, I would take a painkiller, it would go away, or I'd, if it was a migraine, I'd have my jab and it would go away, and now I'm having to find alternative things to do, and it's exhausting, because when you're feeling poorly anyway and you have something on top of that and you want it to go away and you know there's something you can take to take it away but you can't take it it's a bit annoying but um i have been using an app actually a hypnosis app which is i think it's called migraine relief and it's fantastic um i've also got the sleep one which is like to help you sleep and i cannot recommend them enough i'm not somebody that has ever been into that kind of thing i have been into that kind of thing it's just they've never worked for me but when you're desperate you'll try anything and I am desperate so I tried it and it worked um, they actually send me to sleep like most of the time like I fall asleep halfway through and I'm like oh but I want to listen to what the lady's saying um, basically it kind of works by like just relaxing your body and someone's talking to you um, I'll leave a link down below but yeah if you have problems sleeping or if you suffer from severe headaches or migraines um, yeah I definitely give them a go I think the last thing that I was going to talk about is names we have chosen uh, the names for the baby whether it's a boy or girl Sam is less keen on the boy's name um, he's trying to kind of convince me otherwise but it's a name that I have my heart set on and it's the same with the girl like, I came up with the boy's name he came up with the girl's name so for now the baby is called 
baby Paisley because that's going to be one of the baby's middle names. Whether it's a boy or girl, the second middle name will be called Paisley. So we're calling the baby baby Paisley so that we don't have to call it it because Pennywise and all that. Yeah, so I think that's it for the first, for this video. I will be keeping you updated. I have some ideas for some other pregnancy related videos um, to do with like mental health and stuff. So I'm going to try and get back on that and be filming and editing. Hopefully I'm going to start to feel better and yeah, I'm very pleased to share this kind of journey with you and I hope you're pleased to form for us as well. So um, if you have any questions about anything I've talked about, leave them down below. Um, please like this video, share, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again soon.